so this gang, they ran out. Uh, they ran out the prime minister. Uh, Haiti's apparently going hungry. They had to send over the Marines to evacuate embassy personnel. Anthony Blinken is headed to Jamaica. They're going to have crisis talks with other Caribbean leaders. So the uh, guy who is known as Barbecue, who is on video apparently eating finger meat, not joking, this is what's happening. He's apparently in charge now. Ariel uh, Henry has left. They wanted him to resign. He left. Chaos has just engulfed uh, Port-au-Prince. And his actual name is Jimmy uh, Cherizier, uh, and he is known as Barbecue. And the airport came under attack. Dominican Republic would not allow this dude to land. Smart on the smart on DR, because why would they want that? And he was supposed to step down last month. And then they had armed criminal gangs that had, uh, it was like a coup. They launched this assault to remove him from office. And Haiti's a failed state. I don't know why some are now saying, suggesting that it is. No, 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 it is. It is. So just absolute chaos. Absolute chaos. Dead bodies in the streets. Uh, it's, it's horrible. Now, the place that I went to, and I hadn't been there since 2019, was Turks and Caicos. And we didn't, we haven't been since 2019 because they were one of the, I think they were one of the strictest islands in the Caribbean on the vaccine mandate. All this is going to come together in a moment. So bear with me. They, you couldn't just have like, they, they demanded that you had the vaccine, but not just the vaccine. You had to have every single shot that was available. You had to download their government app, upload all of that stuff, give, I mean, a tons of stuff. And they absolutely refused to acknowledge natural immunity. They didn't care if you had it. They didn't care if you had it once before. They didn't care if you had it twice before. They didn't care if you just got over it and probably had all these, you know, good uh, antibodies in your system. They didn't care because you had to get the injection. That wasn't actually vaccinating you against anything. And so we didn't go. I, we were like, one finger salute, bye. And so they finally uh, removed it last year. And we went and... Uh, when, the la when we were there in 2019, I was on the beach, and I saw, I think it's called a sloop, one of those long ships, and I could see it in the distance, and we'd never, there was, there. I mean, yeah, every, every nation, every island has, you know, an element of crime, but there wasn't a lot there. Like, maybe, you know, a couple times a year, somebody would be, you know, shot and killed, somebody would smuggle in a gun or something. Uh, but they had a pretty good security presence where we stayed. And, you know, when you go out, you go during the day and you're just smart. You know, you yellow level level advisory with situational awareness. And I'd never seen this before. I was on the beach and I was standing there having a rum punch. And legit out of the shrubbery and bushes and everything else came like actual, I mean, fully kitted out, riot gear, full auto. I can't remember the platform they were rocking. I'd never seen anything like that before there. And I was watching them, and all of a sudden, there were like 30 of these dudes that stepped out, all kitted up. And I, we were in uh, Providentialis on Grace Bay. And I'm sitting there watching all this, and some of the other people are getting real nervous on the beach because they see this. And, and I walked up to one of the dudes, and I said, hey, you know, what's happening here? And he was like, ma'am, no need to worry. You know, this is, uh, we're just, uh, you know, no need to worry. Just, uh, you know, go ahead and go back. And I said, look, I'm not scared that y'all are here with us. I actually feel a little bit better. I said, I'm just wanting to know if it has anything to do with that ship out there. And he was like, yep. And he pointed out to the horizon and he goes, uh, we got reports from local fishermen that there are anywhere from 40 to 50 illegal immigrants from Haiti on that boat. And he says, normally they do this at night, but they're trying to dock over here and enter illegally. I was like, wow. And they, we watched and, you know, I, you know, I thanked him for, you know, kind of keeping an eye on stuff and, and I felt better and, I, what, and sure enough, maybe like 20, 30 minutes later, that boat came in and they, they, they started arresting all those people on that boat. And there were, I mean, from what we could see, I mean, at least 40 and that boat is, as it got closer, was jam packed full of people. And the next day we, uh, uh, had uh, rented a boat. We were going out fishing and we were talking to the captain of the boat and I brought that up and he was like, oh yeah. He's like, the local fishermen, the native population 
of Turks and Caicos, they keep an eye out for all this stuff because they said, and, and this was 2019, and he goes, we're having a real problem now with people coming in illegally from Haiti. And they went off on illegal immigration. And they were saying, we have only so many resources. We have, our economy can only handle so much. You know, like for instance, to die for conch there, you have to be native born and you have to live there in order to even get the license to die because they, they don't want everybody to run out of conch. And it's actually, the conch salad is amazing. Don't you dare edit that audio. I'll kill y'all. And um, the, he, was, he was like, he goes, yeah, in the United States, he goes, I don't know what he, and he volunteered this. He's like, I don't know what the hell you people are doing in the United States. He's like, y'all are going to get, he's like, you guys are going to get overrun. He's like, you have to, you have to be as alert as we are out here in our waters. And they, all the locals, they all have like this little network. So fast forward to last week and we're there and uh, talking to a guy uh, that um, we had used as our, as our driver and, you know, get us from the airport and all this stuff. And it was a company that we'd worked with before. And the guy uh, apologized. He's like, oh, I was supposed to get you from the airport. And he was taking us back. And he's like, I was supposed to get you. And he's like, I had to go to a funeral. And we, were, we said, oh, we're so sorry to hear that. Uh, you know, uh, we're, you know that's, that's a shame. We're really sorry. And he's like, yeah, he's like, it was my cousin who was killed by a stray bullet. I'm like, what? And he said, yeah. He goes, uh, I don't know if you're all aware of this, but uh, since the pandemic, the problem with illegal immigration from Haiti is now chaotic. He said it's a crisis. He said they spend over their little country, their little country with their little economy, over 20 million a year sending, like re repatriating them back to Haiti. And he said they're smuggling in uh, all kinds of weapons, drugs. So what happened is this cousin was in his apartment upstairs. There was an illegal immigrant Haitian uh, drug dealer below. Another Haitian gang uh, member, apparently there was a drug deal that went sour, and the guy started firing wildly. The guy upstairs came out to see what was happening and was shot and killed. Stray bullet. Three people dead from that. And he said people are getting shot and killed every week now. And now they're estimating at least the illegal immigration population from Haiti is like double that of the actual native population of Turks and Caicos. And he said it's chaos, and he said a lot of people are feeling very unrestful. The illegal immigration problem from Haiti is ruining Turks and Caicos. And that's just one example. I don't even know about the other islands that I have not visited and heard from their local populations. And you see what's happening in Haiti now. It's always been a failed state. Even back when the Clintons were collecting money saying they were going to go help Haiti, as Kane noted, and they didn't actually help Haiti. It's been a failed state for a long time. And now it's even more. They had 4,000 inmates that were leased, that they just let out from the main prison. Fighting in the streets. Some of the pictures that I've seen, they're just dead bodies in the road. I saw a photo of a woman literally pushing her son's face to the side, walking past the dead body so the kid didn't look at it. And there are shops on either side. Like it's like a, you can tell it's like a main commercial area. And it's, it is disastrous, absolutely disastrous. And this is, I mean, I don't, Kane, do you remember a time when Haiti wasn't dealing with us? No. I don't remember a time. No, it's almost like they kept it in that condition so that they could continue to use it as the magnet for more money generation in, this, in these charity efforts. Yeah. It's, at least in hindsight, that's what it's looking like. I mean, it's, it is, I mean... It's just crazy to see this. And what gets me, look at this. You have this, this island where you have Haiti on one side, Dominican Republic on the other. Now look at the differences. I mean, Dominican Republic, they've been developing. They are shorelines. They have resorts. They have excursions. It's a big, I mean, tourism is a huge industry there. You don't hear people talking about, oh, I want to go vacation in Haiti. You mean run by now the cannibal gang? Yeah. It comes down to government. And I love the leftist spin about all this. Well, it's because colonialism. Shut up. It's because they have tyrants running Haiti and Dominican Republic. They have a more open government. It comes down to how you're governed. You could sit here and try to do all this identity politics stuff to excuse the failure of your policies that have created a failed state. But ultimately, it doesn't hold water. 
But it's just wild to see that. Now, here's my question. And I want to ask this of Stephen Yates. He's going to join us later. Is there going to be a domino effect with other nations in this region? I mean, when our Marines are evacuating embassy staff, that's a big deal. 